favourite day, so I'm just cold by the wind up, so I'm out kiting. Leave messages, please. Oh, that bugger, how did he know? <laughs> Hi kiters, this is a basic guide for amateur wind forecasting on the Ottawa River. I'll run through three apps, iKite Surf, Wind Alert and Wind Guru, as well as the three local wind meters at Nepean Sailing Club, Alma Sailing Club and Britannia Yacht Club. Figuring out what the wind will do is complicated and even the best still get it wrong. But this guide will help you interpret the information available and get you more luck with the wind. So what's the difference between a forecast app and a wind meter? Well, first off, most forecasts use a satellite measurement of weather systems and then a computer to calculate how the weather will change and what kind of wind it will bring. But it's super hard. Think of it like this. If you took a 10 second video of a football game and they had to say where the player is going to be in the next 10 seconds, you might make a close guess. But if you had to say where will they be in 30 seconds, chances are your predictions will get less accurate. And this is where the local wind meters come in handy. A wind meter just measures the wind speed and direction at the spot where it's located. We use those to cross check the forecast information. If the forecast says it's meant to be 10 knots, but the wind meter says it's only 4 knots, this is bad, the forecast for the rest of the day might be wrong. But if they show similar readings, we might be in luck. Another good trick is to use trees and flags to give you a rough estimate of the wind stream. Over time you'll get better at reading these, and they'll also make up part of your strategy. I'm going to start with Wind Alert, but iKite Surf uses the same format because they run off the same platform, a company called Weatherflow. Starting from the top, we've got the location, Britannia. Then below that, NAM, 12km. Now what on earth does that mean? It stands for North American Meso Scale Forecast System. And it's just one of a range of forecast systems available. We've also got the GFS, Global Forecast System, CMC, Canadian Meteorological Center, HRRR, 3km, that's the high resolution rapid refresh model. Whoa, that's a terrible name! And WRF, 5km, weather research and forecasting model. So, how do we know which one to use? Well, let's try and keep it simple. The name gives a bit of a clue about what we can use them for. If I want to go kiting today or tomorrow, I'm going to use the NAM, the HRRR, or the WRF. Any of those. The MISO scale means that it's calculated to the local conditions which is where they get the 12 km from. All these models will show a forecast that's close to the same. So you might think, okay, that's not too complicated, but what if it's Monday and you want to go kiting on the weekend? Or maybe even chuck a sickie at work and go kiting on Friday? Well then the NAM isn't going to help you because it only gives a three and a half day forecast. This time you're going to need the longer range GFS or CMC. But as we know, this forecast is going to be less accurate. So the trick is to just let your boss know you might be sick then wait for the NAM to catch up on Wednesday before you actually start pretending to be sick. Oh yeah, hey boss, uh, it's Dave. Uh, I'm not feeling so good, eh? Uh, I might not make it in tomorrow. Hi Dave, don't forget the 12 meter. Oh, shut up, I'm on the phone. <laughs> After we've chosen the model, we can see the date, the time in 24 hour format, and then the average wind speed with a color coded bar graph. Inside the bar, there's a black arrow showing the direction. The wind will be traveling in the direction of the arrow as it would appear on a compass. So if it's pointing to the right, the wind will be traveling from west to east. Since the wind direction is named by the direction it came from, we would call this a westerly. After that, we can see the gusts. These often appear a lot higher than the average. Ideally for kiting, we want to see a low difference between the average and the gusts since most kites only have a useful wind range of around 13 knots. If I want to ride on this day, when the gusts are above 25 knots, then I might not be able to use my 12 meter. At the same time though, I'll still bring it to the river, because this forecast might be too high and the 12 meter would be perfect. This is why it's always good to have several kites with you. Then we have the sky, showing sun, clouds and rain. As well as being useful for knowing what to wear, quick changes in the sky are often associated with changes in the wind, which might not be shown in the forecast. 
so keep an eye on that too. On this day of Britannia, we can see the wind dropping as the rain arrives, so you probably want to arrive early that day even if you don't mind the rain. After that we've got the temperature, which can also signal wind changes, followed by the hour and the date again just in case you forgot. Now what's the difference between the other two apps? Well, Akkaid Surf has a better link up with local wind meters. It displays the airport and sailing club readings, which means you can check both the meters and forecast at the same time. This also means it's able to display actual wind readings against the forecast. Akkaid Surf and Wind Alert also have a Quick Look and Quick Look Plus model, which paste together the short range and long range forecasts. This gives you a high frequency of update in the short range, but it also gives you that extra long forecast. So what's good about WindGuru? Well, it's mostly the same information presented in a different way, but you do get more specific data on cloud cover. It shows percentages and height, as well as the amount of rain, air pressure and humidity. As you learn more about local conditions, that information can come in handy. If you like graphics though, the Weatherflow apps have the option of precipitation radar and satellite view of cloud movement. Oh, that sounds pretty awesome. Next up, if we've already got the wind meters on the iKite Surf app, then why would we need to look anywhere else for the same readings? Well, on the app, you have the readings presented on a pretty small scale in hourly chunks of time. But if you really want to see how much the wind has been changing throughout the day, how wide the gaps are between the lulls and gusts, and how much the direction has been shifting, then the individual sailing websites will present this information in slightly more detail. And as an extra bonus, the Britannia Yacht Club also has a webcam, which means you can check out the surface conditions. Another important point would be whether you check out more than one meter. There's actually sometimes good reason to mistrust a wind meter. The main reason would be if the meter was not receiving clean wind on that day. For example, Britannia Yacht Club faces northwest looking up the river, which provides great readings from the northwest and west. But any wind coming from the east is interrupted by buildings and trees before it gets to the meter making readings from that direction very different to how the wind would be at Constance Bay where you would actually go kiting during an easterly wind. So let's put this all together. How are we going to know when to go kiting and when not to go? Best case scenario is that we get a big slow moving low pressure system and it takes three or more days to go past us but not directly over us. This is going to bring us steady winds from one direction. It's less good if we get a little storm popping up and passing straight over the city, even if the winds are strong. So what's that going to look like on the forecast graphs? Well, we want to see the whole week lined up with green bars and green or orange gust readings, with the arrow pointed the same direction for as many days as possible. We don't want to see the gusts being too different from the average wind speed. We don't want to see big changes in the strength or direction, and we don't want to see more than a few millimeters of rain per hour. Apart from there being no wind at all, the worst case scenario is that we see green bars and white bars in the same day with big changes in the wind direction, percentage of cloud cover, and the amount of rain. If you're a confident kiter, you could take all your kites to the river and see what shows up, you might get lucky. But if you're new to kiting or have other things to do instead, then chances are the conditions will be too gusty or not even happen at all. The basic rule then is that we want to see all the readings look consistent. The closer they are, the more stable the weather system is and the better the wind will be. From here on it's just a matter of comparing the meters and the forecast to practice translating them into real conditions. Check out our other video on the best conditions for local spots and one last tip is to watch out for riding at sunset. The wind often drops significantly in the hours before sunset, even if the forecast says it's going to stay windy overnight. If it drops while you're out there, you might have a long paddle in, and you might have to pack up in the dark. See you in the water! <laughs>